Hey musicians, my name is Damien and I'm a pianist and composer. You know, it can be really difficult to find a good door when you want to start writing music. There's just so many options out there, it can be really difficult to know which one to choose. And most of the time you need a fair bit of money to get a decent door and other software to start making music. There's actually a lot of really good free doors out there and today I'm going to be talking about six of them that you can download right now and start making music with. I'll go over the pros and cons of each door as well as the system requirements and system compatibility so you know exactly which one you should choose. Now let's get straight into it. I only heard about BandLab recently and when I looked into it, it's actually a very beginner friendly door and it's really capable too. And the main difference between this door and most other doors is that it's actually web-based. So there's actually no program that you need to download for this. So for the system requirements, you need the latest version of any Chromium based web browser. And if you want to use the mobile app, you'll need these versions of iOS or Android. The thing I really like about BandLab is that it has a really simple to use interface and everything's really easy to find and it's very user friendly. This is what BandLab looks like. You can add a track here and it gives you a few options for different instruments here. So we'll just choose this instrument here and then we've got the piano keyboard thing and then we can create a region here. So you just right click and then it comes up with this and brings up the piano roll. So we can also add a loop and so we just look up synth one thing I think is really cool about BandLab is that it syncs to the cloud and so I can just continue this project on my phone. The biggest downfall of BandLab in my opinion is that it's a really good starting point for making music but when you get more advanced with making music you'll need a better door to use plugins and more advanced tools. But just keep that in mind if you do choose to use BandLab. And on that note, you can't actually use custom plugins, which is a really big drawback with BandLab, since you won't be able to use more advanced tools and effects and instruments. But I mean, other than that, BandLab is a really solid choice to start making music because it's so easy to use. The next door I'm gonna be talking about is called Cakewalk, which is actually made by BandLab as a downloadable program. So here's the system requirements for Cakewalk. It's also a Windows only program. First of all, I think that Cakewalk is another really solid choice for beginners. It's pretty easy to use and after watching a few YouTube tutorials, you should be able to work out most of the program and all of its features. And I guess you could say that learning it is a piece of cake walk. So here we can just select from a template when we open Cakewalk. So I'll just select the basic one. So here we have our tracks over here and then we can just open up our MIDI editor and this is what the piano roll looks like and then we also have our mixer here there are a lot of built-in plugins over here as well and speaking of plugins you can still actually get custom plugins yourself and use them with um, cakewalk which is really good to see as well so it's not limited just to these plugins here if we just click add a new track then we can click instrument let's say click labs create just create a new track and then click here and we have our, our instrument here. So far, Cakewalk looks like it's a pretty good choice for beginners. However, it's only compatible with Windows. So if you own a Mac, then you're out of luck. My only other dislike about Cakewalk is that it looks a little bit outdated and clunky, but it's not the worst. All in all, Cakewalk is a really solid choice for beginners to start writing music. So the next door we're going to be having a look at is called Reaper and technically it isn't free because it comes with a 60 day free trial and then you have to buy a license to keep using it but compared to other programs it's really cheap. Ableton Live and Reaper is available on Mac, Windows and Linux which is really great. Firstly Reaper is a really capable door. It can be a really great asset to have even if you don't use it all the time to make your music. I think it's worth it just trying it for the 60 day free trial because if you do end up liking it then it's really cheap to buy but if you don't really end up liking it then you've gained a lot of experience about using a door and you can apply this to other programs as well. I'll oh, just give you a quick walk through Reaper so this is where your tracks are and then you have your mixer down here as well you can toggle this by pressing ctrl m or command m on Mac and then if I just make a midi track here this is what the piano roll looks like so you can just add some notes in there like that so one of the things that did change about Reaper is the theme. So you can make it look a bit nicer by downloading themes, which are, you can find a lot of free ones. 
you just go here and change the theme and it just makes it look a lot nicer so it's a lot better now like that so this is reaper's website and they have heaps of videos on how to start using reaper and just like a really progressive um, tutorial so this will really help you just to get started with using reaper so as i said before reaper has a lot of functionality and it is a really powerful door when you get comfortable with it and because of this i think reaper is a really good investment both financially and time wise because you can use the door as a beginner and then when you become more advanced you don't really need to move to another door so since reaper technically isn't free Compared to the other doors that we've looked at, then this is where Reaper lets us down. So another area that Reaper lacks in is the lack of built-in loops and sounds. Unlike other doors like BandLab and GarageBand, Reaper doesn't really have built-in loops and sounds, so you'll have to go find them yourself. Finally, I think that the built-in plugins in Reaper aren't very user-friendly, and they're a bit difficult to use as well, which is a bit disappointing. So the next free door that we're gonna have a look at is GarageBand. So you can get GarageBand on the Mac, iPad, or iPhone, and maybe they'll even make a version for Apple Watch too. I like to just make it a change in the Apple Watch while you're walking down the street. But look, if you do have an Apple device, then I think GarageBand is a really good choice. So for the system requirements, you pretty much just need the latest OS for whatever device you're using. I've only ever used GarageBand for iPad, but from my experience of it, it's super user-friendly and it's a great start for beginners. So this is what GarageBand looks like. So you just go add a new project here. So once you add an instrument, you can view all the tracks here and then you can just add a new track like this. And then here, if we press this, we can just add in some chords. And then the piano roll, we can open up here. So if we double tap here and click edit, we can edit the notes here. The Mac version is definitely a lot more capable compared to the iPad OS and iOS versions. So if you're able to use a Mac to use GarageBand, then I would definitely do that. But don't let this stop you from using GarageBand on your iPad or iPhone. And you can use custom plugins with the version on Mac, which is a big plus. Moving on to the negatives, the main thing that GarageBand does lack in is similar to BandLab, where it does have limited functionality and as you become more advanced with making music, then you'll need a more professional door. If you're planning to use your iPad or your iPhone as your main device for making music, then just be aware that it can be pretty annoying sometimes using those devices. So finally, it's only available for Apple devices, so if you don't have an Apple device, then you're out of luck. So now we'll have a look at LMMS. Now, I remember using LMMS ages ago when I first started getting into using a door to make music. And it was pretty confusing when I first started, but it does have some pretty cool features as well. So here's the recommended system requirements. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I found that LMMS was really easy to download and set up for me. It only took me about a minute, but this can obviously vary for you. This is what LMMS looks like when you start it up. It has some built-in sounds over here, which is really cool. So you've got basses, drums, and just different sounds like that. So it's also got a lot of really cool plugins out of the box. So if you just click here, it's just got all these different plugins. So a quick overview of the program. Here is our tracks. So this is all the tracks we have. And then we can resize this to look like that. And then we can just drag in any of these plugins or any sounds and just put them there. And then this is our FX mixer. And then this is what the MIDI editor piano roll looks like. So it's just like that. And you can just add notes in like that. So I think the biggest letdown that LMMS has compared to the other doors is that it's pretty difficult to start using as a beginner because it's not as similar to other doors that we've already looked at. And the user interface is also not very user friendly. Another big drawback in the program is that you can't actually record audio into the program. So it might take you a few YouTube tutorials and looking around the internet to really get comfortable with using LMMS. So the last store we're gonna be having a look at is called Waveform Free, which is made by Traction. There's a pro version and a free version, but we're just gonna be having a look at the free version today. So the good thing with this, if you really do enjoy the free version, then you're able to upgrade to the pro version. And it's actually a pretty cheap price compared to 
to other doors. And this is really good too, because if you're pretty happy with the door, then it doesn't cost that much to upgrade and you are already comfortable with that door. So it's available for Mac, Linux and Windows as well. First of all, there are a lot of preset sounds and instruments that come with the program, which is a big plus when you start writing music. So it's really good to see that Waveform 3 has these sounds right out of the box. So this program I think is really user friendly, which I really appreciate. This is what it looks like when you first start up the program. So you can just select here from a template, but we'll just go new project. So this is where our tracks are. And then if we go over here to this little eye, we can click on the mixer thing and this is where our mixer is here. And then this little box here is where we have all our samples and tracks. Then if we want to add an instrument, say keys, like this, we can open up the MIDI editor. And then this is our MIDI editor here. This program probably took the longest for me to set up, so it wasn't the best experience downloading it. But once you do that, you should be good. So compared to the other doors, this one's pretty straightforward and easy to learn. And after a few YouTube tutorials, you should be able to get your head around it. Finally, I think Waveform 3 is a really capable door. But I think as you become better at writing music, then it's better to upgrade to a more professional door that has more features. So now that we've had a look at all of the doors, here's a quick summary of them. BandLab is very user friendly and it's also cross platform, which is really nice. Um, but you will need to move on to a more capable door in the future. I think Cakewalk is another great option for beginners because it supports custom plugins. The only thing is it just looks a little bit dated, but other than that, it's really good. Reaper is my personal favourite out of the six doors just because it's the most powerful and you don't really need to move to another door when you become more advanced. The only thing is, is the 60 day free trial. GarageBand is a really good option if you have a Mac or Apple device. Um, it's a very capable door. The only thing is you will probably need to move on to a more capable door in the future when you need more advanced tools. LMMS is a very different door compared to all the other ones we've looked at. So it's got some great features, but it's a bit of a tricky one to start off as a beginner. So I wouldn't recommend it. So Waveform really surprised me. I've never heard of it before. It's a very nice looking door and it has a lot of features and built in sounds, which is really good. And then if you want to upgrade to Waveform Pro, you'll already be familiar with the program, which is really good too. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, please leave a like and let me know down in the comments below what your favorite free door is or if you use one that I didn't mention in this video. So if you've decided on a good door to start making music, then I highly recommend that you check out this video to start writing good chord progressions without any experience. I'll see you in the next video.